Okay, ELE 111, here's your uh, first attempt at looking at a Bode plot uh, in process. Normally, we would be doing one of these in class where you would do these calculations as well as uh, make some measurements in the lab to support your data. So what we're going to do is construct a Bode plot, as it says, um, V out versus frequency of a low pass filter circuit. So this is the filter circuit that we've chosen. And we know that the response curve is going to look something like this. So I took the liberty of calculating the um, cutoff frequency. And it's, it's a healthy 31.8 kilohertz doing one over two pi FC. I suggest you plug in and try to get that value out of your calculator. So now that we know that there are 31.8 kilohertz where the sweet spot is, where the minus 3 dB point is, where the half power point is, where the 70%, 70 70.7% point is, the 0 0.707 point is. Our goal is to prove that at 31.8 kilohertz exactly, theoretically, we have a minus 3 dB drop-off and uh, that the curve looks like what's in the black circle. So we need test points. We need test points around 31.8 kilohertz to plot the curve properly. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to suggest to the left of the cutoff frequency, we'll, we'll do a, a measly two points, and beyond that, where the slope drops, we'll do four points. Uh, and the, the frequencies are really up to me, uh, but I'm going to pick nice values like 10K, 20K, 31.8K, 100k, get it way up there, 500k, and by the time a megahertz comes, um, 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 you know, we'll, we'll have our, our curve. Oh, by the way, uh, this curve that is sitting over here is a high-pass curve that you're looking at. Our curve will be, our curve will go like that. So disregard this little line that you see there. I'm just showing you a generic Bode plot. Happened to be the wrong one to show you, but uh, we could make one for, for a high pass or a low pass. They're all done the same way. Now, what's really important here when you do one of these in real life in the lab, since this capacitor circled in red is going to have its frequency adjusted, it's going to load your signal generator down. So you have to be sure that 10 volts peak to peak is always coming through the circuit at the power supply. You would do that by measuring right there, by measuring that peak to peak power supply to make sure that it is uh, always maintaining 10 volts peak to peak. You, you'd hate for the input voltage to fluctuate because then all the readings are are essentially useless at this point okay so that's a real important thing in, in our particular case we are doing a a test sampling uh, a theoretical test sampling so ours never changes it sits here at 10 volts peak to peak at the given frequencies we're going to need to do either a lab or a hand calculation that's going to measure or calculate V out with an oscilloscope or a digital meter. And then the dB part here is a hand calculation. So let's continue and let's take a look at the circuit. We want to solve for 6, 1, 2, 3. This is the cutoff point right here, the magic spot. And we want to do three more on the next page. So I'm going to start at 10,000. And at 10,000, I expect the uh, capacitor to have um, some sort of moderate amount of 
resistance, it's not resistance, it's reactance, it's X sub C, not resistance, but it is in ohms. So I calculate X sub C. Now, I hate to tell you this, you have to calculate X sub C over and over and over six times for six frequencies. Once you've done that, it's a simple case of using voltage divider over and over multiple times to gather our data. Now at 10,000 Hertz, we're down from 10 volts already, already to 9.528 at an angle of negative 17.436 degrees. So we're already dropping at 10,000. It's pretty flat, but we're still dropping. Then we run the calculation at um, 20,000, and here is the information. It's the battery times the impedance, which we just calculated here, at 90 degrees negative, divided by ZT of the whole circuit. And you see at 20K, it drops to 8.4. And at the sweet spot, at the sweet spot, I'm expecting, I really am expecting the output to drop to 70% of 10. That gives you 7.07. .07. So here we are. I calculate the resistance and I see there's, well, actually it's impedance, 1,001.48 uh, ohms. And... Um, that's almost the same as the 1,000 that sits up here for the resistor. So the cap and the, resist, uh, and the resistor are almost equal at this point. I run the computation, and I notice that I get 7.06, sorry, 7.076 at minus 44.95 degrees. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for at the minus 3 dB point we have 70.7 percent of our 10 volts delivered to the output let's continue final three calculations of three of 0.63 see now now down here the filter is dying it doesn't have very much of an output voltage at that spot uh, because the resistance keeps dropping from 318 to 63 to 31. And before you know it, you've got this table staring you in the face that has um, these columns, a constant 10 volts being delivered, the multiple frequencies that we put in, six of them could have picked more but six six will do a nice job the output voltages which look like they're all over the place here and then we get a uh, decibel representation here where the loss this this is as close to zero db as you're going to get at 10 kilohertz okay um I mean, that's, that's our goal, is to get 0 dBs. Uh, we've got uh, 0.4199, and as we move away, or as we move towards the um, cutoff frequency, look what happens. Look what happens here at the 3 dB point, at the minus 3 dB point, we have minus 3 dB. That's a win. That's exactly what we were after. So the dBs are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The bigger these numbers get, the bigger that number gets, the smaller it is. This is going to negative 29 dBs versus over here it's going to 0.41 dBs. This number is bigger. This number is bigger than minus 29.4. 951. So, when you've done all these computations, it's about time to put them on a Bode plot and take. Well, I wanted to look at what you got. So,
what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a Bodhi plot page like this, and I would like my I would like my 3db point to be at about 31. This is this is 10k. This is 20k. This is 30k. 40k, 50k, 60k, 70k, 80k, 90k, 100k, 100k, right on that line. Okay, you with me? So, at 10k, which is way up here, the dB is 0.4199, and it's really hard to see it here, but... It's right there, okay? The next point at 20K, at 20K, which is located right here at this green line, that's 20K, 1.4, 1 1.411. There is 1.411. It's dropped. And then when we get to the critical frequency here we're at minus three dBs and this thing is smelling like a rose at a hundred K it's minus 10 you telling me that that's not right that's perfect at a 500 K okay 200 K 300 K 400 K 500 K which is right there you're at minus 23. Take a look at this. This is minus 20. This is minus 30 here. And uh, um, that's 23. That's almost 24 right there. Almost halfway. Right on the line. And then at 1 megahertz, which is out here, this is 1, one megahertz. At 29. At 30. Basically, it's at 30 okay we plot at 30 and we're right on the line i can't complain can you and i come over here come over here it looks like it's a little harder than i thought to do i'm gonna lock this puppy in here lock so that we don't have that roll and basically basically what i was going to do was draw a line a blue line that basically follows these green dots. And of course, if we'd have tested at two megahertz, three megahertz, uh, three, three, uh, five megahertz, we'd have been out here in this region way off to the, way off to the right. And this thing just nose dives into the ground and you've got your first low pass Bodhi plot experience. These are really important tools. These are really important exercises. If you go to ASU, they'll probably end up spending a four-month class with you to teach you how to do these with just resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Then they'll teach you in another class how to do it with operational amplifiers and possibly transistors and FET amplifiers. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat and the reason why they teach you all these things is that this is the curve you get with a capacitor and a resistor. If you use a transistor or an operational amplifier, you can make this thing, you can make this thing, let me get a red, you can make this thing die a lot quicker if you're using better, I don't want to say better, uh, if you're using... Um, advanced technology or other means to do the same job. It gets more expensive to build this filter with a operational amplifier, a transistor, or a fed amplifier. It just costs more money to buy the chips. So, uh, you know, this is a cheap man's filter, and it works great most of the time. So, thanks for listening.